thank you very much for joining us, guys. Um, we're here to talk about the amazing connection between Vivo Barefoot and the wave and how we all believe in reconnecting with nature and getting outside in nature and all the wonderful things that go along with that. So um, let's kick off the chat today uh, by asking you the question, Nick. Mm -hmm. um, is this everything you set out to achieve? You know, when you dreamt creating the wave yep. into this world, mm -hmm. is this what you imagined? Um, it's a much bigger scale than I imagined, 100%. Uh, you know, originally, I was thinking like a nice, you know, some, some lovely place by, you know, in the countryside, wooded valley with a little lake somewhere get you know maybe get a cafe going something that will really get people outdoors but very very um, very very much nature based um, but the whole then then the whole surfing element of it then then came came on board and going oh we could put we could put the surfing lake in the middle of it so that needs to be quite big and, and by virtue if you want to catch you know good waves you need more scale and so that started to grow and grow and grow and then the technology improved so much. And then, yeah, and now, now you look at this and go, yeah, it, it's, it's a scale like I never even thought. But actually, the, mainly because the, the opportunity for the impact that we you know, can absolutely make with it is um, uh, it, shouldn't, it, shouldn't be, it shouldn't be made such, such a narrow vision. I like really wanted to, you know, really expand my it really expanded my vision through that process a real iterative process of just going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until we got to the point where we go right it's got big enough we also need to get it built and uh, raise money to get it built um, and build a team um, and so I'd say yeah it's really happy with it but it's also still just the start mainly around the sort of culture and the values that we want to bring to this place and I can, I can definitely vouch for the, uh, the impact because I turn up here probably a little bit too frequently for my uh, <laughs> weekly dose of blue health and well-being yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and uh, all of the big smiley faces that kind of come out of, um, come out of that water just loving the experience is, um, is, is profound. So yeah, yeah. You know, the impact is personally felt. And actually, like when you talk about the scale growing bigger and bigger, I remember um, the, the, the two Nicks, the, the other Nick who's also um, helped on the journey as well that I know since, since childhood. But when we turned up to the building site, I was so shocked. And I think I was with Galahad as well, but we were so shocked by the scale that our kind of knees trembled a little bit because, you know, this is, it, was, it was a profound kind of disruptive idea to put this technology that had never been kind of tested ultimately mm -hmm. and, and committed to it and um, you know uh, it ultimately is working so yeah yeah hats off yeah what do you mean by blue health um, blue health and Nick will be able to tell tell us all a lot more about this but blue health is, is ultimately the kind of the, the kind of human health impact through humans connecting with with with, with, with water and, and the ocean um, so, you know, in our world at Vivo, our mission is to reconnect people with the natural world, which at a, at a kind of human health level is profound yeah. and, and something that we've all, um, I think, en masse discovering through the pandemic in the last year or two, that, that being out in nature um, has, has, has a very profound kind of impact on our well-being um, on, on, on many levels. And blue health is the oceanic kind of version of that connection isn't it yeah blue health green health yeah. it's yeah it, it, it's it's the merging of the two really um, and that's you know that I guess again going back to the original vision is that you know and, and also when you saw it um, Asher at that stage whereas going this feels like a real concrete beast is like that this doesn't this doesn't sit comfortably at, the, at that stage it didn't sit comfortably in the surroundings yeah. um, and I was kind of going I was at that stage going, how, how will we actually be able to get the two, two merged together? Um, but what's been great is, as soon as the water came in, that really chilled me out quite a bit going, well, first of all, that doesn't, that doesn't look so, so obscure in this environment. Um, 
and then now as the more of the landscape starting to develop and uh, starting to mature a bit more and we've got much more planting going on then I'm going actually that's it's almost like nature can then start to invade that space again and, and start to soften those ed edges um, but it's you know this is a long-term project as well you know we're planting trees that I'll never sit underneath them um, but that's great it's it's there for future generations when you talk about this it sounds so personal to you and I can really see the passion coming through so why why is this so personal to you why is this vision and what you're trying to achieve here so personal to you uh, yeah it's it brings brings together all of the things I absolutely love in life being in water surfing I, I was working in healthcare for 18 years before starting on this journey um, and and I guess I guess going right back to the the beginning was also a little bit of a promise to my dad on on, on my dad's deathbed I said I was going to do something pretty big and bold something he probably wouldn't like me to have done because he'd probably been the person going that's way too risky but actually um, in his passing actually it gave me a little bit of a lease of life to go actually there's no there's no there's nobody on my shoulder saying I can't I shouldn't do it or it's too risky I'm just gonna go for it why not uh, so initially it was like a bit of a legacy for him but now it's actually become a legacy for for hopefully for as many people as we possibly can yeah that's incredible do you can you relate to that Asha yeah I mean I can I can relate to it you know I was just listening to Nick narrate the journey to the wave and I think um, you know we've we've got a kind of humble kind of foot shape shoe business that you know um, you know in many ways probably our first the first way we imagined it to be was was something kind of and um, we came from humble beginnings but something a bit more a bit smaller and kind of maybe 20 people and you know you know 50 maybe 100,000 pairs of shoes you know made out of natural materials and and um, and, and then yeah some some point along the line you start to you know, realise that, that, you know, that there are more people in the building and getting a small group of like-minded people to, into a bigger group of like-minded people and, and, and the impact that you're having all the way through the value chain from, you know, the people making the products to the people using the products um, and trying to, you know, circle that all around is, um, is, is a journey that is going to be never-ending, you know, and we're only scratching the surface and, and, and uh, and in the same way, probably Nick and the, and, and the team at The Wave are still developing the culture, still developing the experience, and, um, and I think probably have, have got plans to try and take this experience to other parts of the world. So it's, uh, you know, we're, we're both in, in many ways at the beginning, of, the beginning of our journey where we're trying to kind of um, make a kind of healthier, healthier people and a healthier planet. Yeah. I think that's really interesting though, because in many ways, I think Ash is probably being a little bit humble. Something that you, I heard you say was that you, you dream like 10 years out in advance, but then you know what you're doing for the next six weeks. But then if you, someone asked you what you're doing in the next like two or three years, you'd really struggle to tell them what that was. Yeah, it's kind of like little, little defining moments yeah, uh, you know, of time I can kind of think about. Uh, you know, as I say, sometimes I don't know what I'm going to do minute by minute. But then I know what's going to happen in six weeks, six weeks time, and then ten years time, and I definitely have always got at the back of my mind a sort of thousand-year business plan, brewing in the background, just going, right, if we could really, yeah, this, if we could create this kind of impact, you know, looking at on that, on that, on a much more sort of um, infinite game level, then, then, that's probably my sweet spot. That's where I love to work. Yeah. So talk to me about impact then, like what have you seen so far? You opened what, this time last year? Uh, yeah, October 2019, so about um, 16, 17 months ago. Uh, but we, we opened up pretty much in autumn, winter, and then we were getting ready to go uh, for busy spring, summer. And then of course we went into global pandemic and lockdown. So we've never, we've never done a spring and summer before, so we're learning really quickly as we go. Um, what was your question again? I've forgotten. Impact. So, <laughs> oh, the yeah. impact of it, yeah. So the, yeah, the impact, I guess, initially it was just how on earth does this work? It's like, how, how, how do we get all our you know, bookings and the operational side of the whole place and making sure the maintenance is, of the whole place is, is running well, plus finishing off the landscape, um, finishing off all the earthworks, all those kind of things. 
and then and then we had we did have that sort of hiatus of time of um, you know global pandemic and being in lockdown to then go right when we come back what what are we actually going to be doing um, in and, and in that meantime I had 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 a, a big stroke and I really wanted to think about when I come back what's what's the impact that I can create and so we're now starting to look at well first of all we looked at our sustainability mandate that we've always had which is uh, obviously a, similar with, with you guys is looking at the social impact and the environmental impact and footprint that we're, of what we're doing. So we're just about to put um, hopefully a solar, solar array so that we can, all of this is at the moment just comes off, off the grid but renewable, but we'll be able to self power on site, which would be phenomenal. Um, and also looking at the landscape as well. So making sure that again, we're, we're putting much more um, you know, trees, and so we've got like nearly 18,000 trees being planted here. And then from the social impact stuff, which is the stuff that I'm very much involved in, we've already got kids with ADHD, anxiety, depression, they're coming here as, as part of a, a, um, you know, a regular uh, project so that they can come in here and do surf therapy. So instead of them having to have medication, they can come and have surf therapy as their, their medicine. Um, we're working with people with early stage psychosis. Um, we're also starting to look at the whole cultural piece about surfing. It's a very male dominated white space um, and how we can actually bring more females, people from BAME backgrounds, sort of slight response to you know, the whole Black Lives Matter, but also looking at a sort of post-COVID, who are the people post-COVID who are really struggling in life and how can we can support them? over the next uh, couple of years. So sort of foundation starting to emerge off the back of that. Um, and that's, yeah, I really dig the sound of all of that stuff. So, that's all um, yeah, incredible. I yeah. have so many questions, but I guess the one big one I want to ask is around this idea of the sensory kind of cognitive therapy. I mean, how did you, I mean, does that connect to your own story? Like how did you decide to kind of push forward with that here. Yeah, I mean, fundamentally, the whole reason why I love, love surfing and love nature, love water, um, is because I'm, it's my happy place. It's where, where I always go to when I'm feeling stressed, tired, anxious, um, you know, with a bit of a head funk, I go, ah, oh, just need to go surfing. And, you know, something that my wife always said, like, Nick, you're in, a, you're in a weird space. Why don't you just go surfing today? Because you, I know you're going to come back a better person for it. And then, of course, we, we, we set about doing this because just knew it was something that we should be sharing. It's like even people, and people come here even if they don't surf, but they come and just listen to the waves and just walk along the pier and look at the water and they feel instantly reset. Uh, and so it's something that I just knew that it works for me and I wanted to share it with as many people and the more you talk about it and particularly talking about to surfers like well yeah I, t I totally get it that's why I do it as well and so you go well great let's now you know where's the evidence behind that and and then and so we started to we looked at sort of um, we uh, produced a report last year which actually starts to gather all of this sort of evidence around blue health and how it really improves people's health and well-being um, and so now it's just something you go, know, let's, let's share this as much as possible. Um, and particularly being inland, it's a perfect situation. Near, near, a, near a big city, we've got a real chance to impact people's health and well-being through that. Well, you just recently moved here, haven't you, Asha? Are you, are you experiencing all the effects that uh, Nick's talking about? Yeah, yeah, I am. I mean, I'd be lying if I said uh, the wave at the end of my road wasn't a cherry on the cake. But, um, <laughs> But um, look, I'm originally a West Country boy from down the road, and um, you know I've been living in in between London and, and and China, kind of South China, as you know, for about 15 years. So I've been kind of quietly waiting for the opportunity to move back to the West Country. And um, yeah, during the pandemic, we got the we saw the opportunity to to expedite kind of getting the family um, to the countryside, you know, with a, with a slightly bigger garden and more green space. And I was just listening to. Uh, to your point around that kind of sensory connection and obviously our kind of sensory perspective is the perspective of, of, of the kind of foot so you know we're out to reconnect people to the natural world and to kind of to natural movement ultimately and and um, 
and and your feet is where it all starts. I mean, the, the you know the, the best bit of technology to ever go into a shoe is the human foot, and they're made to feel exactly kind of like your hands, and so there is a kind of there is a bit of a synergy between between natural movement and feeling, and and, and obviously um, and obviously surfing where. Yeah. It's all about board feel and wide, strong stability, and then the, and then the, the, the power and the movement up the up the kinetic chain. I mean, just I'm just sitting here as you guys are talking, watching the you know waves, you know, in the same way a caveman probably just is looking at the fire, kind of zoning out. But yeah, the um, yeah the that kind of 360 sensory experience of green health and blue health, you know, with all of your senses in in high definition is. Is, is profound, you know, and we're doing some research too, but you know, you, you, you almost don't need the research because you just, you know, you don't need the research to tell you what you already know, but yep. there's going to be some fascinating stuff come out with your guys' university partnership. And, yep. and I mean, actually, just recently, we just had a peer reviewed study that we did in, in conjunction with Liverpool University. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and apparently wearing Vivos, which, you know, there's no magic sauce in Vivos, as you know, it's basically just, just recreating the barefoot condition, improves foot strength by 60% and, and balance by, by 37 or 8%, I think was the study. So, you know, what's the, what's the take home here? That the closer we can get to our natural kind of sense of being and the less stuff we can put between ourselves and and the natural world the um, you know the better it's going to be 100%. it's pretty simple yeah yeah I really like what you say around obviously there's importance in getting that research and demonstrating a lot of what we're talking about but that that kind of metaphorical application of the concepts we're talking about mm -hmm. you know as a long-time surfer myself growing up in Australia the best analogy I can use is, you know, you go through this high period of stress when you're paddling to get on a wave and you get on the wave and it's just like, you know, nothing else you can think about because there's that like high stress of making sure you land and then you, you know, everything. And then, and then you get, you paddle back out, the paddle back out stress. But then when you get out the back and you sit there and you look at the horizon and you're just chilling, maybe a dolphin goes past, you can see the bottom of the ocean, you know, and there's that peace. And it just makes you appreciate that, that peace that quiet, that calm, the ability of your body to go through that and then, you know, turn back out. And I love all of that. Like, yep. what in terms of those more anecdotal analogies, I mean, what have you seen come through here? Like, what are some of the stories that you, you kind of heard? Um, <laughs> I mean, almost, almost every single day we're getting, we're getting feedback through our customer service team, emails back saying, you know, I've, I've had the most profound experience here. Um, actually, probably a more recent one is, is yeah, we got um, about eight, eight or ten um, uh, adults with early stage um, psychosis here, and they just said that coming away from it, it, they they were so much more chilled out, like so so grateful for just the space around here. So it's not even the surfing again; it's the the sound uh, in in their ears. Um, you know, and just just being outside, and also then just seeing, or actually experiencing the energy coming from other people as well. So they they're probably too anxious to get in the water themselves. So they were able to just sort of almost live vicariously through the energy that was here, and the happy faces and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, literally every single day people are, and and in a minute you'll see people coming out here who will be just be glowing and really happy so for, for me I know that and all of our team they know that we have got hundreds of people every day walking away they're talking to each other they're they're connecting to each other they've had an amazing outside experience um, so it, yes to me that that's 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 the perfect I think this is the total embodiment of the concept of regeneration I mean, that idea of not just being slightly better than you were, but actually fundamentally having a trans transformative effect where you actually go like net positive on your health and net positive on nature. And I think it's so fascinating to be at a place like this where you're really just showing by example. You're not kind of trying to change the system by, you know, kind of complaining about all the problems with it, but you're actually just 
you know, I'm sure it absolutely wasn't easy and by the sounds of it, making this thing come to life was the biggest challenge of your life in many ways, leading to another challenge, which was the biggest <laughs> challenge of your life. But, yeah. you know, what do you feel like is now happening in terms of those ripples around at a like systemic level? Good um, pun, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Accidental. <Wayne. laughs> I think, um, I think, I mean, we're, we're, we're entering a kind of weird normal at the moment anyway. So I'd, I'd sort of, I'd, I'd like, I'd like to answer that in about a year's time when I know kind of what's going on. But I think fundamentally what I've noticed, uh, particularly over the last year, is that, that uh, I think there'll be, there's going to be a shift in, in terms of consumerism. There'll be a shift in terms of um, also people wanting to, you know, really valuing experience, having experiences. And also, I think everyone having been locked away for a good amount of time, actually understands how important the natural world is uh, and how important it is to be able to get out there and have access to it. And hopefully, um, this is the thing that I really hope, is, is that therefore we'll become much more fierce protectors of it so that then we, we value what we have around us and go, actually, we've got to be, we've got to be doing business in the right thing, we, in, in the right way. We need to you know, look at our leisure time in the right way. Um, it would be really interesting to see how you know, people starting to move around and travel. Are, are, are we going to go back to our crazy travels that, that people normally have? I think all of us, we've been talking today about actually what's, what's the right level where you can go, um, actually staying at home is really good for you. Uh, but also you have to do some traveling as well to be able to you know, connect to different people and different places. Um, so for me, I think it's, it's, it's all up, up in the air a bit at the moment. And I, and I love the chaos of that where you can go, right, it's either going to just fall down either back to where it was before because it's the default or on the way of falling down, maybe we can all disrupt it a little bit and make sure that it settles back in a better place. Um, so I don't know what, what the answer is at the moment, except I'm like with you guys, we just want to be part of making sure there is a, a shift in the right direction. No, I like that. We, we, we talk about the, uh, the new normal perhaps being the new natural, you know, and we're, and we're, we're optimistic about it and, um, and think that, you know, the, uh, the curtain's been kind of lifted, if you like, on, 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 on some aspects of how we all used to operate. I mean, we were all flying everywhere all the time, you know, first in, last out, in the office, in the capital in London. Yeah. And I think, yeah, and I think, um, yeah, definitely the new natural is going to be, you know, global nomad kind of working and blurring the lines of the best of working from home, which isn't the end solution, as we were discussing earlier, yeah. with, um, you know, how we operate kind of um, and collaborate, because we're going to need to collaborate and work together to find big, bold, hairy decisions yeah. for, for, for the challenges that we're facing with you know, with people in planetary health. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a, an exciting moment where we've got technology at our fingertips and we realize the value of, of, um, of nature and of experiences like this and how to kind of, um, you know, create, um, you know, human-centric technology and unlock, our, unlock the potential to, to, to disrupt the old normal. Yeah, exactly. And, and usher in the new natural. Yeah. <laughs> I, love that. I want to ask you both a question actually, because yeah. you both created these epic sized dreams and um, they obviously overlap in so many ways as we've discussed today. Would you do it all over again? If you were here right now, would you do it differently? Would you, are you exhausted? Are you happy you've done it? <laughs> You go first. Okay, yeah, I mean, that's, it's, a, um, it's a good one. Would I do it all over again? I mean, like for like, probably not, because if I knew what I knew now almost every year, I almost wouldn't have done it. You know, you need a, you need a healthy balance of, of kind of uh, ignorance and grit to kind of, to kind of go the next step. But, you know, the, the, the vision was always clear and the vision was always and still is incredibly worthwhile. Um, and, and the potential it has as a force for good is, 
is, um, you know, it's beyond myself and anyone else in the business. You know, it's not a question of if it's the right thing to do, it's kind of, you know, how fast and kind of when it's going to happen. Um, you know, yeah, we do it all again. We probably kind of make less mistakes. I'd like to think so. <laughs> and, you know, and spend a little bit less money and probably have slightly longer kind of, um, or less restless nights. I heard um, an interesting podcast with Jamie Oliver the other day where he said that um, in many ways he's the perfect person to start a restaurant business now because he failed at such epic proportions <laughs> that the lessons he learnt now make him the most ideal to start a restaurant no, business. I mean, that's what they say about being an expert. It's about failing as many times as possible in a very na narrow bandwidth. Um, and then you can, uh, but you've got to learn from your mistakes, as you know, which is, you know. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and for me, I mean, pretty much <laughs> carbon copy answer, I mean, it's exactly the same. Um, I guess the, the thing, again, is, is around, um, the thing that really got me through the whole journey is the naivety that I, I brought to the table of just being able to go, I literally don't know what I'm getting myself into, so I'm just going to just keep going along that path and just keep asking the question because I don't, I really don't know the answers at all, but just surround myself with good people who can help me find those answers. Um, so I would do it again as long as I could still maintain that naivety of going right back to the beginning and not knowing anything. Uh, doing it again now, um, it's, it should be much, much easier because we're going to build more of these. Um, but we've got, we got a really good team where we've built, we built uh, a great team to be able to do it again. Um, so I don't need to make those mistakes that I did in the, in the beginning. Um, and, and we know where to go and find those answers really quickly, whereas before I'd probably have to, to get an answer, I might have had to have had 15 cups of coffee over about six weeks to be able to get an answer, whereas now um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's at the press of a button. Um, so it should be a much quicker process. Do you think that having this like one central ethic around nature, being outdoors, living that sensory lifestyle, do you think that's helped you achieve that? 100%, yeah, yeah. I think having, the very, very first thing that, I, that, that we did when I start, start this whole thing was sit down with this amazing guy, um, Chris Hines, who was, uh, he, he um, helped set up Surface Against Sewage and also head of sustainability at the Eden Project. And the first thing we did was um, write our sustainability policy before doing anything else. Um, and, and it just created a blueprint about how all of everything that we've just been having conversation about around how we're going to deliver blue health, green health with a sustainable business um, model and then everything else flowed off the back of that and I think that's really allowed us to have that real purpose throughout everything and that allows us to be able to communicate it very clearly to our audience, uh, to followers, to our investors and it became the sort of golden thread that meant that you know we couldn't we, it was never negotiable for that to be taken out. I, I can resonate with that as well because our non-negotiable from day one was, and it was really simple, we're just trying to make the perfect shoe perfect for feet. Yep. So when, when the sales guys or, you know, at times when the business wasn't doing too good, it was like, let's just put a bit of foam in or let's make the women's shape a little bit more feminine. It, it's, um, yeah, they're just, they're, non, they're really important non-negotiable pieces that keep you going in, in the right direction and, and, um, and uh, I think that's important. I think it's really wonderful. I'm actually personally very connected to this because I'm trying to swing Vivo Barefoot into more of an experiences model. And I suppose you probably got people trying to swing you into more selling products. Oh, 100%, <laughs> yeah. But you know, but, but what's great is because we've got very clear principles about um, what we're wanting to, to achieve, that's why we talk to Vivo or, or you know or, or other people whereby it's very very clear you, you, you there's such an alignment in, in values uh, and what we're trying to achieve it's really really simple and so so many people like in fact we get a lot of people saying that I really want to bring your product you know our product to the wave but I'm I already know what the answer is but I'm going to ask it anyway and I was like well. You know what my answer is, but thanks for trying. Um, it's 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 very very clear. Um, 
right. That's so right. Okay, so you had that values right at the core, and that's just guided you the whole way through yeah. every business yeah. decision. Yep. Yeah. How fascinating. Yeah. I really love that. And it actually brings me to my final question, which is, you know, what what is your big piece of advice for anyone that wants to do something like this? You know, set up a epic shoe business, footwear business, pardon me, or this incredible kind of outdoor experience all around nature. I mean, what's your big piece of advice for, for anyone listening? Well, for me, it's, it, it, and it, it's, I know it's relatively cliche in these, in these kind of conversations, but it is going back to that purpose, that, that why, why are you doing it? Set out the soul very, very early. So it becomes that, that absolute guiding principle by which decisions are made, people, you build it, your team, and then you've got a team of people then that even if you're not there, that actually you know it's just going to continue on that, on that, on that, that path. Um, and for me, that's, that's critical. It's almost like building your tribe. Yeah, 100%, yeah. But just, just, yeah, having that common goal and being able to be really, really clear and being, I guess that's the sign, that's the sort of visionary side is where you've, you've got a clear plan and you can, you can um, tell other people that very, very clearly. Um, for me, that, that's, you know, that's the guiding thing, really, guiding principle. And, get that right and you can take you can then take on any challenge yeah you know and I'd again cliche on cliche I, I, I kind of resonate exactly with that you know I think it's my parents always told me to you know spend the first part of your life you know finding that thing that you're calling that thing that you really want to do that you're passionate about and uh, and then stop at nothing to kind of give it everything you've got um, and uh, you know, it's, it's got me to where I am today. And as the sun comes out there, and this is the last question, and I'm watching the kind of uh, the, the waves rolling in. All, all I'm thinking about is celebrating with a with a couple of waves with um, this gentleman here. And <laughs> it's going to be a wonderful start to a uh, start to the week. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's do it then. Thank you very much, guys. It was a great Thank chat. Thank you. Emma, thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, thanks for your pleasure. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs>